Uh, all right, so what, what's your, I'll take this one first. What's your favorite secondary character in the film? Uh, this is a hard one because this is just full of Great supporting ones. characters. Yeah. But I think Dabney Coleman, Dabney Coleman really? in this film and in Nine to Five, Nine to five. is just perfect. Like nobody else could play that role as well as he could. And the way that he's manipulated by Dorothy. Yeah. But in a way that he like, he thinks that he's being overly masculinized, but Dorothy's just using it all as a way to dictate what she wants to do. She just playing with him. Yeah. To get what she wants. It's so good. And Dabby Coleman, I'm, he's just, he really is like, he's both of these films. He's the perfect. And I was trying to think of some other films that he's been in. Uh, and the only ones I can remember were um, You've Got Mail. And then there was one other, it was like a comedy in the 2000s. They did a really good job in. But well, there's a movie in from like 1989 or 1990. You can, put, you can get it on IMDb and it's got the word time in it. And it's got a clock as the poster. And his blood work gets mixed up and they think he's going to die. So if he dies in the line of fire, because he's a police officer, his family will get the reap the benefits of the insurance. So he tries to get himself killed in all these dangerous situations, but he can't, he has a hard time trying to get himself killed. Jeremiah told me about it once and it always looked really, it had a really good car chase scene. So if you ever watch it, anyone watching as well. Short um, time? Short time. It's got one of the best car chase scenes of any movie so check that out it's like a 10 minute car chase scene oh wow it stars daddy Coleman and terry gar's in it too okay so yeah check that out short time oh he's in clifford too that we talked about a few weeks he's ago the boss he, yeah he's one of the bosses isn't he yeah um what about you what was your Who's your favorite secondary character? Well, I wrote down Sandy and I also wrote down Jeff. Um, I'm going to go with <laughs> Jeff really just because I like how dry Bill Murray was in this. All the lines, anytime that I try to be dry, it's always to emulate Bill Murray because he's one of the best at that type of humor. You know mm-hmm. what? He says a funny, um, a funny line that says, um, so he's sitting there talking to Michael Dorsey and I think he's got like the robe on, he's got the curlers or something in his hair. And he's talking about how, how, what a pain it is to be dressed like this. And then Bill Murray says, or Jeff says, you know, I really appreciate what you're doing, but is this just for the, this is just for the money, isn't it? It's not just so you can wear these little outfits. And the way he says that I paused it, went back, and watched it with closed captions so I could write the dialogue down as I screwed up as I was reading. But it's such a, the way he delivers that. And then Michael Doris is like, I'm not even going to answer that. The whole exchange. And then Sandy shows up a moment later, I think. And they, they act like, uh, you know, he has to get in the shower mm-hmm. and just turning on the water, and that little craziness. I think that scene's next. But I would just like to know, because really, do we know that much about Bill Murray's character? No. He's a writer and he works at the same restaurant that Michael Dorsey works at. Yeah, that's it. We know he's his roommate. He every line of dialogue, I don't I don't know about every line of dialogue, but I think it's in IMDB, IMDB, the uh, trivia section. Almost all of Bill Murray's lines were improvised. Almost that's all crazy. the lines were improvised. And how crazy is it to get Bill Murray? to sign on to be this like secondary. Cause I mean, he's coming off of as SNL days where he was just like the huge, huge, massive. but he just comes in and delivers a beautiful performance. It's just so subtle. It's so well, see, subtle. Murray, you know how nowadays, like it's, it's cool. Like if like a big actor does like a little cameo or a small role in a movie, like, Oh, we got, you know, like there was this uh, Indian film that popped up on Netflix, but they had like a Keanu Reeves cameo and they got like a lot of big hashtags about it. 
you know, did you? I don't know if you saw that. But I didn't see it. I didn't watch the movie, but I saw the little clip and uh, or the trailer. And Keanu Reeves is featured, or like like Bill Murray in Zombieland. You know, mm-hmm. This is more than a cameo, but I think Bill Murray did cool things in film, or saw good material as well. Um, before that was a cool thing to do. Yeah. Because if you look at Bill Murray's career, we could, we could do a show on just Bill Murray's career one day. Uh, um, he's made some interesting choices, especially the last 20 years. Even Space Jam, he still has like a really small role, but a very important role. Can we talk about how we even forget that time exists with that, like right when that scene happens? What yeah. time is that scene happening? Because he's worked all day. Then he's been called over to babysit. Then after babysitting, he goes out with her father. Then he is assaulted by this, the doctor character. Yeah. And then Terry Gar's character shows up that night. It's like okay. every single thing that could happen happens from 5 p.m. till whenever this is. And these are big events that last hours. I mean, it's got to be 2, 3 a.m. What do you it's think so? It's got to be. It's like, that's another thing. It shows like how wonderful it is. All, every single storyline converges on that one night. Yeah. So say this, like the weight of the whole movie sits on his shoulders on that one night. And then that is the trigger for the next day of like, I got to get out of this. Like, I can't do this anymore. Yeah, this is just too much my shoulders. Yeah. And it also also shows like a a little behind the scenes peek to the extreme of maybe a playwright or an actor. Like they don't have, they don't have a conventional life for the most part. That's good. Because even before, you know, we were talking about more small scale, but we lead kind of unconventional lives as well. Mm-hmm. So that kind of leads in, like, makes it relatable because all this crazy stuff going on at 2 a.m. and, like you said, seven, eight-hour time period. This yeah. Is crazy. Yeah. It's, like, it, it makes, it's, you have to suspend time, and they never mention time, but you yeah. don't care because it's just going so well. It just yeah. kept you in. Um, I really, really, really <laughs> just thought that was so much fun.